Hello, you're welcome to this lesson. In this video, you are going to solve this question I have here on the screen. The question says an airplane used to drop water on bushfires is flying horizontally in a straight line at 315 km per hour at an altitude of 80 meters. Determine the distance D at which the pilot should release the water so that it will hit the fire at B. So this is the question we have. So to solve this question, you are going to apply projectiles. This is because of the curved part of the water. Okay, the water is moving in a curved path, so you are going to apply projectiles here. So let's look at what you are going to do. So because you want to find a distance d, you are going to use this formula. S equals s naught plus v naught multiplying t plus half a t squared okay this is the formula i'm going to use where s is the final distance and then s naught is the initial distance or the position and then v naught is the initial velocity t is the time and then a is the acceleration so this is the general formula that you are going to use okay so because the the path of the water is in the kept form you are applying projectiles so you are going to consider the horizontal and then the vertical motion of the water okay so let's look at what you are going to do so for the horizontal motion of the water let's look at what you are going to do so we need the initial position of the water okay so that will be x naught okay and then the final position which will be x so you consider the final position of the water to be d okay which is the d that that's there and then the initial position of the water to be to be zero okay so it will move it, it will move horizontally from x naught to d so that it will be able to pour on the bush fires so that's what it means so now let's look at v naught so initially we were told that the plane is moving at 315 kilometers per hour okay and then the water was in the plane so what that means is that the water will have that same horizontal velocity that the plane is having so the initial velocity of the water will also be 315 kilometers per hour so you will need to change this value into meters per second so let's look at that so you're going to have 315 times kilo which is thousand thousand meters per hour so changing an hour into seconds will be 3600 seconds so now let's simplify this and see the value for v naught so let me cancel out these two zeros. So I'm going to have 315 times 10 divided by 36. So that gave me an answer of 87.5 meters per second. So this would be the initial velocity of the water house it was in the plane. And that would be the same as the initial horizontal velocity of the plane since the water was in the plane. So now we are, considering the, we are considering the horizontal motion of the water okay and then since in the horizontal direction we consider a resistance to be zero that's for projectiles there's not going to be any acceleration okay so because there is no air resistance there will be no acceleration in the there will be no acceleration in the x direction this is because there will be no force acting on the water in the s direction whilst it was in the plane so you're going to have the acceleration in the x direction to be equal to zero so now let's substitute this into the general formula that we have so you're going to have d equals s naught which is zero plus v naught which is 87.5 times t plus half a t squared and we already know that since the 
the there is no force acting in the horizontal direction because there is no air resistance the acceleration in the x direction will be zero so the remaining term will be zero so plus zero so you're going to have d to be equal to 87.5 t this is what you have so this becomes our equation one so you see that there is a variable t here that we need to find in order to get a value of d so let's look at what you are going to do so because of this we will need another equation so we are going to consider the vertical motion of the water so the vertical motion of the water so initially the plane was at a height of 80 meters and then the water was in the plane so which means that the initial position of the water in the vertical axis direction also will be the 80 meters since it was in the plane okay and then the final position of the water relative to the ground should be y which will be zero okay so this is what we have now so now in the vertical direction there's going to be a weight for so for this reason you are going to have the acceleration to be equal to the acceleration due to gravity and then that will be equal to 9.81 meters per second squared okay this is what we have so now let's substitute these values into what we have here okay but before then let's talk about the velocity in the in the x as this direction which is the initial velocity so the plane was moving horizontally okay and then the water was also in the plane initially so what this means is that the plane doesn't have a vertical velocity okay so that means that the velocity of the plane in the vertical direction will be zero and then since the water was in the plane initially that means that it will also have its initial vertical velocity to be zero so we're going to have v naught x to be v naught y sorry we're going to have v naught y to be zero which is the velocity of the water in the vertical direction whilst it was in the plane okay because that was its initial position so now we have some values here so let's substitute it into the general formula so we are going to have s to be 0 and then s not to be 80 plus v naught which is 0 so that would then become 0 plus half multiplying acceleration due to gravity and then since acceleration due to gravity acts downwards you are going to negate it okay, so you are going to have minus 9.81 multiplying t squared so it's that the only variable we have here is the t so you just have to make it the subject so simplifying this term you will get half multiply 9.81 then that will give us a value of 4.905 so you have 4.905 t squared to be equal to 80 so let's divide both sides by 4.905 So, and then we are going to have t to be equal to the square root of 80 divided by 4.905. So, let's simplify this and see what you get. Square root of 80 divided by 4.905. That will give me a value of 4.03855 seconds. So, that's the value of t. So this will be the time that the water would take okay to get to a distance d okay so that will be the time so now let's substitute that value into equation one okay let's substitute that value into equation one this is our equation two so we are going to have d to be equal to 87.5 multiplying t which is the 4.03 Eight five five seconds. Okay, so this should be equal to. Let's see what you get. Eighty seven point five times four point zero three eight five five. That gives us a value of three hundred and fifty three. Three hundred and fifty three point 
37 meters so this will be the distance that the pilot will have to release the water so that it will hit the fire at b so that's all for this this video thank you very much for watching please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel